Good morning, YouTube. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, the day before New Year or Christmas Eve, I pray that you're having a blessed holidays with you and your family. I wanted to make another follow-up video, uh, kind of a, a side video to the video I did on the air conditioner earlier. This is another video about air conditioner. And this video, I don't have a problem with this, but I did have a problem with this last summer. And I told you guys about it in the previous air conditioner video that I made for the other customer. Uh, the situation with this uh, heat pump was that it, the only, in the summertime, it only when I went to turn my AC on, the air conditioner on, it would only cool heat. Even though I had set on, say, 72 degrees and it was 90 degrees outside, it would only blow out hot air out the vents. Now, I knew right away what it was. And as I told you guys before, I had called a a highly recommended AC guy in our, in our area here to come out and look at this, simply because I just did not have the time to look at it. And he came out, he looked at it, and he told me it was a defroster board. Uh, and we'll get into that here in a second, but I said, okay. I said, so... You know, how much is that going to cost me? And he told me he would text me back. And he did. He texted me back. And he told me that it was going to be a little over $800 uh, for the board, the labor, the installation, and everything. And I told my wife, see, I used to install heat pumps back in the day before the heat, the, the uh, Freon uh, band came around. And I agree with the heat, the Freon band. I mean, it's, it's very detrimental to our environment. So I 100% agree with it. But I used to install them before that, and uh, I knew right away that that was not probably not the case. So here's the thing. If your heat pump is stuck in cool mode, even though you got it turned on heat for the wintertime and it's only blowing out cold air, or if your heat pump is stuck in heat mode when in the summertime you're trying to blow out cold air and it's only blowing out hot air, there's usually a couple things there may be a couple more, but there's usually two main things that could be the problem. 90% of the time, in my experience, it has been the reversing valve, right? The other 10%, it is the defroster board. Uh, but I knew it's probably the reversing valve. And so today, I'm going to show you a tip and trick that all AC guys are probably going to get on here and give me flack about saying I'm going to kill somebody or all this stuff simply because... They don't want you to know how to do this because if you know how to do this, you can do this for free. Costs you nothing to fix your heat pump if it's a stuck reversing valve. So I'm gonna get set up. I'm gonna show you how to do step by step how to do this. Even though this heat pump is not having that problem now, I will show you exactly what to do. Very easy, very simple. Uh, basically, anybody can do it. Okay. But before we get set up, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn you around here. So hang on just a second. Let me get everything set up and uh, turned around, rather, and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so now we're turned around. So the first thing you should always do when do, working on any electrical, especially a heat pump, that box right there, it goes out of your house into your heat pump down here. What that's for, that's the power that controls this outdoor unit, right? So what you want to do is simple. You raise this box or open it, whichever one you've got. And as I showed you on the previous video, you have an off and an on. See, the off is upside down, but the on is incorrectly. That means this, this breaker is incorrectly right now, and there is power going to your heat pump. So we're going to pull that out. Now, you can just lay it to the side. A lot of people lay it up here on top, and that is perfectly fine. Or if you're working with more than two people, and uh, you know, you're know you curious as to it, uh, and you, you got to walk away from here for a few minutes. If you put this back in this way, now see, it says off is upright, and the word on is upside down. That tells your teammate or whoever's with you that, hey, someone pulled that breaker for a reason. I better find out what's going on before I reconnect it. That's why I always get in the habit of doing that, simply because if someone comes back out here and is laying up here, they may just shove it back in and get you in trouble. So that's the way I do it. You do it however you want to. Now, I'm going to get set up because the first thing we're going to do, the reversing valve is down inside here on every heat pump. They're never outside. I've never seen one outside here. They're always down in here. 
And so the first thing we have to do is take this fan off. And it's just a few bolts like here, here, and here. So I'm going to get up and do that. I'm going to take that off. And I'm not going to take the fan all the way out. I'm just going to kind of fold it over. And then I'm going to show you where the reversing valve is and what to do to fix this. It literally would not take you any more than 30 minutes to do this entire process. You can do it for free. You can do it yourself with no license, no nothing. Okay? Just be careful, though. And make sure you plug, unplug that electrical connection at all. Do not forget that step because you can get in trouble. Okay? So bear with me here a second, and I'll get this set up. Here, let's take these screws out. I use a, a drill to do it. You can do it however you want to. That's pretty simple. Okay, so it's three screws on mine. Now, what I normally do is just to see that on mine, the uh, power coming to the fan is over here on this side. If it's over there, wherever it's at, wherever your little, you'll see a little black PVC thing, and there'll be wires in it. Let me show you, actually. So if you see right here, see the black? You see the wires? Okay, whatever side that's on, what you want to do is simple. Simply just fold your fan to that direction. That, that way you save yourself from having to take the fan completely off. Otherwise, you're going to have to take your fan all the way off. All right? That's all there to it. Now, I'm going to pick the phone up here. I'm going to show you what the next step is here. I'm going to show you how to fix this. Now, let me see if I can get up on something here. Now, right down there, I'm going to put you real close to it. That little tube right there, that long tube with that electrical coil to it, that is your reversing valve. Now, I'm going to see if I can get down underneath it so I can get you a better picture of what it looks like to the side. Um, maybe, uh, actually, let me go up here. So, hang up, bear with me just a second. See if I can show you. I want to get you a really good view of it so you know what this is. It's pretty simple, and I will show you later on. I want to stick it down there real close. Right there, you see the three different tubes coming off of that? I'll move it back and forth and move it over to the side now. But that right there, right here, this is your reversing valve. Now, if you see the electrical connection coming off the top of that, that is a coil. So how a reversing valve works, and I'm going to go through this simply for you. You don't need to know all the ins and outs of electric hub of reversing valves to fix this, but I want to give you a quick rundown of how this works. So what a reversing valve is, it, it does exactly what the name suggests. It simply, when you Freon comes down, I'm going to draw a little diagram here. Here's the valve. Let, let me show you inside here. That'll be more sense to you. So there's your valve. Underneath the bottom, it's three tubes coming down. Three tubes coming down. So the reversing valve simply, when it's on one side, the fluid, the freon can only flow one direction and through one system. And that's, you know, say, let's say it's the heating side. When you turn it to cool, within that coil, I showed you right, right there at the end of my finger, that little electrical wires coming off of there, that coil energizes that reversing valve, flips it the other way with the assistance of gas coming off of this, these tubes, to push the valve the other way. And that lets the Freon flow in the opposite direction. What does that do? Well, Freon either heats or cools. We already know that. So if it travels in one direction in the system, it heats. If it travels the reverse direction in the system, it cools. It's as simple as that. There's a lot more complex stuff that happens in this reversing valve, but that's really all you have to know. That that's what happens. So, what happens to these valves? A couple of things happen. The defroster board will fail to energize this little wire and energize this coil, which will not let this kick over. And like I said, that's usually about 10% of the time, in my experience. AC guys may argue with me on that one, and that's fine. But in my experience, it's about 10% of the time. 90% of the time, this valve right here, 
Inside there is a slider, you know, almost like a torpedo. It slides to the left, it slides to the right. It's made of metal. And that thing will either A, go bad, stick, you can't unfreeze it, or B, it'll stick and you can unfreeze it. One of the two. So the easiest, cheapest, <laughs> the most simplest way to fix your heat pump in this situation is simple. Get you a large magnet about the size of a, I don't know, uh, about one inch wide by about an inch, two inches long. You know, something about the size of a little bit bigger than a cigarette lighter. Anyway, you what you want to do is come down here on the side. What if you can't see? Mine's got a tube going off the top, so I can't access the top. So I went over here. This is how I fixed this very heat pump. I took a, a magnet and I went shoop, 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 and you can feel it. And I just did that about 30 or 40 times to loosen that valve up, because then that valve inside here will adhere to that magnetic field. And as you slide this magnet along this tube, the valve inside here will slide along with it, thereby loosening up the valve that's inside this tube. So you slide it back and forth quite a few times. That should fix your problem. Now, if that doesn't fix your problem, you can try one other thing. You can get on, go to a uh, heat pump store, online, whatever. They make a, a, a conditioning cyst, a conditioning oil for the heat pump systems. You put that in over there or have someone come out and put it in for you, whatever you feel comfortable with doing. But now they have it in a can, you simply plug it in just like you do a Freon in your car. You shake it up and you inject it in there, right? You don't need nobody. It comes pressurized. Hit a feel that system, it has oil in it. It will lubricate this valve up, make that valve easier to slide. After you put that in there, you know, run your heat pump, even if it's stuck in heat, heat mode, that's okay. Run it for 30 minutes or so to give that oil time to circulate through the system. Turn your heat pump back off, disconnect it by the electrical I showed you earlier, and then get your magnet and slide it back along this whole tube again. See, that's a copper tube. The magnet won't stick to that tube, but it will adhere to the valve inside. Slide that back and forth several times. I did it probably 15, 20 times. And that's been a year and a half ago, and I've not had a single problem with my heat pump since. That's how easy it is to fix that problem. Now, I'm going to go, probably not this video, because I don't want to spill too much information. And again, I'm not a current AC heat pump guy. I do know these systems. I worked on them for a long time. I installed them brand new, and I've done all, upgraded old systems to newer systems. And I've done it, and they haven't changed that much at all since I was doing it. Uh, they've got a little bit better on the on the defroster boards, and that's basically it. The the basis of the system remains the same. And so, even though I'm not a professional at this, I don't do this professionally. I do know how these these work, and that is simple as sliding along that, and that will fix your problem. If that doesn't fix your problem, and if you put the oil in it, and that still doesn't fix your problem, then what you want to do next is you want to diagnose the defroster board. Now, there is videos online about that, but I'm going to make a video about that pretty soon. Uh, you know, in my last video, I got a little bit of flack by a couple of guys. More than likely, they were AC guys, and, and, and I'm not saying they're wrong. One guy even said, you're going to get somebody killed. And the reason he said that, two reasons. One is, this electrical over here, I always turn that off. Even though I said that multiple times in my video, just like I did this video, he was, you know, he said that. Second reason is inside here is a defroster board, and there's a capacitor in there that could shock you and potentially hurt you. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how to how to change that condense that capacitor. So if you have a bad capacitor, that'll show you how to do that. Show you pre and and now when it comes to defrost uh, diagnosing defroster boards, every manufacturer is different. You may want to look up your manufacturer and see the specs on it, but that usually will be a telltale signs, and one of the telltale signs will be there be an error code on the board, like I showed you in the previous video, and it'll tell you a certain error code. You look on your diagram, and it'll tell you what the error is, and if it says whatever, you know, something that points to that, then you'll know, hey, uh, you know, I've got something going on with the defroster board. And again, as always, if you don't feel comfortable about doing any of this, 
do not attempt it. Just hire somebody. But if you want to save yourself seven or eight hundred dollars, I can tell you right now, if if that valve, if a if an AC guy comes out and he cuts, because you can cut that valve out and put a new one in, but you may as well buy a new system. I'm going to be quite honest with you. That valve alone, cut it out and put a new one in, recharge it, labor and all, is going to cost you anywhere from eight hundred to eleven hundred dollars, depending on your system. You might as well buy a new heat pump at that unit at that price, right? Especially if your heat pump's ten years old. The, so my advice would be to try the magnet work trick like I showed you, sliding along that valve, try the oil, then come back try the magnet again. If that doesn't work, I'd almost get a new heat pump at that point. If after I diagnose the, the defractable board, which is in here, and I'll show you on the next video, after you tried the valve, and after you tried the defroster board, and either one of those fixes your problem, what I would do is just get a new system. Have it put in. A lot of, a lot of places, if you buy the system, they'll put it in for free. That's what I would do. Okay? So I hope this video has helped you. Now, I was looking through my analytics a while ago, and less than 1% of the people who watch my videos, videos are subscribing. I'm not begging for a handout. I'm not begging for anything. But if you would watch this video, and it gives you any kind of, of help at all please subscribe you can always unsubscribe later if you don't like my channel you can go to a new channel whatever you want to do but if you get any use at all please subscribe maybe a thumbs up maybe a comment that all helps grow this channel and i this channel is all about helping you guys i hope you have a, a great and wonderful holiday with your family god bless you and have a good day